And we're going to start with finding intercepts. I believe that after the work we've done the last couple of days, you guys will find this simpler to do than what we've been doing. We're going to start finding intercepts from a graph. I am going to zoom in on the opening of the left flap first. So the x-intercept, we've talked about intercepts before. I do not feel like this is new vocabulary for you guys. <clears throat> An x-intercept is where the point crosses the graph on the x-axis. And the y-intercept is the same for the y-axis. Let's use our highlighters to find the x and y intercepts of these two graphs. Here's the x-intercept. Here's the y-intercept. Can you find the x and y intercept on the second graph? Do yours look like mine? Okay, close your highlighter and let's use our pen or pencil. We're going to put the coordinates next to those intercepts. This is one to the left and zero up. So the coordinate pair for this one is negative one comma zero. What is my coordinate pair, my x, y, for this y-intercept? Zero. Zero, zero comma three. What about for this x-intercept? Uh, two, two, two comma zero. Two comma zero. And then the y-intercept on that graph? Zero, zero comma two. Zero comma three. What do you notice they all have in common? They all have zeros. They all have zeros. That's important as we move forward with our work today that we recognize that in coordinate pairs for x and y intercepts, one of the numbers is always a zero. I'm going to add to our notes, and I did not do this in the second period, so if you have a friend in that class, in the x-intercept coordinate pair, the x is a number that's on the line, and the y-coordinate is 0. Notice in both of these over here, negative 1 is in the x place, and in the y place is a 0. In the x place is a 2, and in the y place is a Zero. Zero. So what do you think is true about the coordinate pair for an, a y-intercept? It should, should be the opposite. Zero is in the x place. <clears throat> the number where it will cross the y-intercept is in the y place. Keep that in mind. I got this foldable from a blog called Math Equals Love. It's a teacher who teaches Algebra 1 and 2 in Oklahoma. If I had made it, I would have put from a table next. I don't know why she put from an equation next, but it's probably the way she teaches it versus me. In my visual brain, going from the graph where we just talked about the coordinate pairs to the table makes the most sense. So we're going to do the last flap second, and then we'll go back to the middle one. Think about what we just talked about. Zeros are important in finding our x and y intercepts, aren't they? Yes. So read here. For the x-intercept, you're going to find the value in the table where the y is 0. In the y-intercept, you're going to find the value in the table where the x is 0. Okay. 
there's a typo here. It's the same typo that we have in our blue one. Change this x to a zero. This xy pair is going through the origin. When it goes through the origin, it is both the x and the y intersect. And let's just label, this is the origin. X and Y intercept and the coordinate pair is zero comma zero. It's crossing through at the same point, right? What's happening with the second table? Where do you see zeros? The very bottom. And just above it. This one's ordered pair is four comma zero. While this one's ordered pair is zero comma three. Which one is the Y and which one is the X intercept? This is the Y intercept. Picture it. I'm starting at the origin. The zero means I don't move left or right. I just go up to three. What's happening with this intercept? I'm going to start at the origin and move to the right four and stay there. So this one is the x-intercept. With that in your mind, I want us to move to the center flap from an equation. From an equation, it says, x intercept, plug in zero for y, solve for x. Okay, I was just fixing the typo in the table on this document, so when I print it next year, it's right, and we don't have to change this like we just did. When I did that, I added to these notes. And I put a pair of parentheses here that had a blank space, comma, zero. We're gonna plug in zero where the y is. And to find the y-intercept, we're gonna plug in zero where the x is and find what the y-intercept is. Now that works really well when it's in standard form. So add that to your notes. When in standard form. Oops, if I can spell right. I need like a triple M. <clears throat> Is this first one in standard form? No. It's in slope intercept form. So we're gonna ignore this one for a second and work with this one and then we'll come back over here in a minute. This is in standard form. I've got AX plus BY equals C. If I change that X to a zero, I'm basically finding an XY pair where X is zero and I want to know what the y is because the y is going to tell me where it hits the y-intercept or it, where it hits the y-axis, right? Yeah. What's five times zero? Yeah. So I can cover that up and picture a one-step equation, can't I? What's 30 divided by negative two? Negative, negative, negative. negative 15. That's my y. So my y-intercept is negative 15.
we can do the same thing with the same equation to find the x-intercept. But this time, we're going to keep the x in the equation, and we're going to substitute 0 in for the y. And we're going to find out what this number is by putting a 0 here. If I have negative 2 times 0, what do I get there? 0. That leaves me with 5x equals 30. What's 30 divided by 5? In our old textbook, this was called the cover-up method. Have you guys seen what I was doing with my finger when we put in the zero? If I put a zero in here, doesn't that get rid of this term? Because five times zero is zero. Instead of going through writing that, when I'm solving these usually, I just cover up the x term, because if I multiply that times zero, it's gonna be gone. And then I have a one-step equation, negative two y equals 30. Do you guys see what I did there? If I want to find the x, I can cover up the y. 30 divided by 5. It's just a shortcut called the cover-up method. But what the cover-up method really means is if I'm plugging in zeros for the term I don't want, I will find out the term I do want. Now let's play with this one. It has to be in what form for this method to work? So we're going to add the x to both sides because in standard form we have to have ax plus by equals c. And I'm going to get x plus y equals 2. If I substituted a 0 in for that x, what's my y going to equal? If I sub in a 0 for y, what's my x going to equal? So my x-intercept and my y-intercept are both 2. Now think about, you guys already know y equals mx plus b. What is plus b? It's our y-intercept, isn't it? So even before we moved anything, we could have found the y-intercept. What this means with the x-intercept is 0 is we have 2 comma 0 and 0 comma 2. Those are our two pairs. I know we need some more practice on that, and we're going to try six problems in this white foldable you received. We're going to do the first one together and you're going to spend the last part of class finishing up the rest. I'm hoping to actually collect this on Monday for points before we glue them in. So to calculate slopes and intercepts, we just found some skills to do that. I don't know that the order that these are in is the best order for us to do what we need to do here. I think the y-intercept on this first one is really easy to find. It's right here. Where do you guys see the x-intercept? Okay. So we know that our y-intercept is negative 2. It's nice and clear. Gavin just guessed that this might be 3 fourths. When I looked at it, I thought maybe 2 thirds. Who agrees that it's either 3 fourths or 2 thirds? It's probably in that range. It's higher than 1 half. Would we agree with that? And it's not 1. So it's somewhere between that 1 half and 1 zone. And just looking at it, we can't really tell. So I'm going to put down both of those as possibilities. Can we find our slope? The y-intercept is a clear point, isn't it? 
I see another clear point here. Can we use rise over run and find our slope? Okay. How much are we rising up? And we're running across how much? So our slope is 3 over 1, which is equal to 3. I always double check, is that line a positive or negative line? This line is what? Positive. So I can leave my slope as it is. If it's this one, what symbol is going to have to go in front of my slope? Okay. I have my slope and I have my y-intercept. So I can write this equation, y equals 3x minus 2. Does that clarify if it's 3 fourths or 2 thirds for the x-intercept? Not 100% yet, although we can probably start to see it. I need this to be in ax plus by equals c to find my x-intercept. So I'm going to take my form and I'm going to move my x term. And I get negative 3x plus y equals negative 2. Why did I write it over here instead of directly underneath? I did that on purpose because I was recognizing that I was subtracting the x term. And what's true about the a is that it has to be. And that's not going to be positive. So I knew I was going to end up rewriting this. How would I rewrite this equation if I multiplied the whole thing by negative 1? 3x minus y equals positive 2. So here's the original equation in y equals mx plus b. Here's the new equation in ax plus by equals c. Where question here is still about this x-intercept. So if I plug a 0 into the y, and I'm just going to do that with my cover-up method, and I take 3x divided by 3 and 2 divided by 3, what's my x going to equal? 2 over 3. So now we know the y-intercept is 2 over 3. Is that better than us just guessing? It feels kind of validating. We knew it was over 1 half, under 1, but we weren't really sure. That graph's not real clear. We had two decent guesses and we clarified which one, and now we're confident it's 2 over 3. Do you see how we use what we know to find it? Okay. So, with the time left, there's five more questions like this. We're not going to glue this in until after it's turned in, so don't glue this in. But you guys can glue this in. It is going to go, oh wow, I'm really zoomed in. It is going to go, oh, we wrote in here and the other class did not. Put it here. Actually, no, put it here on this side. Because on Tuesday, when you guys have turned these in and I give them back, we're going to glue this over here. Okay?